press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update from Adda 247. Bell icon dabaiye, Adda 247 ki sari notifications paiye. Adda 247, government job in your pocket. Hello and welcome to the Hindu Editorial Analysis of 26th of March. You are watching the Hindu Editorial Analysis in English and I am Saurabh Day. So my dear friends, let's take a look at the motivational quote that we have here for you. I care not what others think of what I do, but I care very much about what I think of what I do. That is character. So perhaps see, there's a saying in Hindi, you know, Sabse bada rog kya kahenge log. Alright, so perhaps because of what people might think of us, what society might think of us, what others might think of us, is the biggest dream killer, you know. So stop thinking about what people are going to think about you and your dreams. Stop thinking about what society is going to think about you and your dreams. Because once you get successful, all of them will be there to, you know, to acknowledge you and to fall at your feet. So always remember that the only person who should think about what you do has to be yourself, my dear friends. And that's what we can learn from here, from the quote of T. Roosevelt. I care not what others think of what I do, but I care very much about what I think of what I do. That is character and we sh all should have this character. Now, my dear friends, let's take a look at the e-paper that we have here for you. So controlling the machine. Now, this is the primary article that's given over here, you know. So this is regarding the new data protection regime that's there, by the way. Then at left over here, unity in defeat. See, this particular article is actually a political article and I'm pretty sure that, see, all those of you are preparing for UPSC exams and other state uh, state level exams, this is a good article for you, my dear friends. Now, controlling the machine is actually a very, very important article and I think we are going to analyze this article as well. Now, then moving downstairs, so the need for special attention. Now, this particular, by the way, article is about special codes. And all those of, and all those of you who are CLAT aspirants, this is a must-read article for you, my dear friends. So not only for CLAT aspirants, also for all those of you who are UPSC exam aspirants, you should definitely take a look at this article. Now, at left over here, after the emergency. So this is a very important IR article, international edition article. And all those of you who are preparing for UPSC and other exams should take a look at the left article as well. Now, so fighting forest fires. Now, this is actually a pretty important environmental based article. So it's also important for all exams. So I'm pretty sure if you are, if you read this article, it'll be extremely useful for you, my dear friends. Now, and right over here, the enchantment of designs. So see, this once again is actually an article which is based on, uh, you know, journalist, uh, from journalistic point of view. It's actually an article from journalistic point of view. So I'm pretty sure that the BAJMC and the MGMC people, the MassCom guys, they will like this article for sure. So they should definitely read that article. Now, at left over here, a legacy of greed. So this is an article which is actually based on an environment. See, this is about the white rhinosaurus, you know, the northern male, uh, you know, the, what do you say, in fact, the northern white rhinosaurus, which actually became uh, pretty much, pretty much is going to, you know, on the verge of extinction, just two left in the wildlife. So this is regarding that article, and we'll have to analyze this article for sure, because this might be asked in your examination in any particular way. So definitely, we are going to analyze this particular article. Now, so my dear friends, now let's just do one thing. Let's just, you know, come back to the center screen once again. And now, my dear friends, we'll get start preparations. In fact, uh, we'll just uh, we'll start the first analysis of today, the first article that we have here. It's a very important article, my dear friends, you know, because a lot of uh, talks have been there regarding the data protection regime and data protection laws. So let's see about that. And here comes our first article of the day. So controlling the machine. Now, what's that? Europe's new data protection regime offers a sound basis for India to craft its own legislation. So perhaps, you know, uh, Europe's new data protection regime is there and that perhaps can help India draft its own rules regarding the same. So during the throes of India's independence struggle, an image of Mahatma Gandhi spending khadi symbolized not only economical and economic and political autonomy, but to its critic, an insular withdrawal from the industrialization and technology. So perhaps, you know, during the time of India's, in, in, India's independence struggle, you know, an image of Mahatma Gandhi spinning that Khadi wheel, you know, it was a symbol of not only economic and political autonomy, by the way, but also to the critics of it, 
uh, or what do you say, an insular or a narrow-minded approach or a withdrawal from the industrialization and technology. Now, this tension is gingerly revealed in a letter from Jawaharlal Nehru to, uh, uh, to Aldous Huxley. Uh, uh, so he was uh, as a partial defense of Mahatma's position when he writes. So perhaps this particular tension over here, it was revealed by Jawaharlal Nehru in a letter of his to Aldous uh, Huxley, by the way. And perhaps he was trying to defend Mahatma Gandhi's strand over here. Nehru was trying to defend the same. I believe in the machine and what has spread it in India, but I also believe in the social control of it. All right, so this is what Nehru wrote, you know. All right, that he believes in the machine and perhaps believes in machinery and would definitely love to have it spread in India. But then again, he also believes in the social control of the same, of the machine. Well, now, my dear friends, that brings us to question number one that we have here for you. So let's see question number one that's there for you. Now, what exactly is the synonym of the word insular from the options broad-minded, unprejudiced, unbiased, and narrow-minded? So guys, now see, broad-minded means somebody who thinks in a broad manner, is a very broad-minded and unprejudiced somebody who does not have a prejudiced form of uh, thinking, you know, who doesn't think about in a single, in, in a single direction. And then again, unbiased is somebody who thinks uh, everybody of, of being equal, you know, does not uh, show any bias towards a particular side. Then narrow-minded, once again, means uh, somebody who doesn't think that much, who's very selfish and thinks about his own person, uh, his own, or perhaps, you know, like that. Means somebody who cannot think at a broader level. Now, so you have to choose a synonym of insular over here. So see, my dear friends, it has to be option number four, narrow-minded. All right, guys, so that's the correct answer over here. And I'm pretty sure that you would have got the, this written in the comment section. Insular equals to narrow-minded. Insular equals to narrow-minded. Insular equals to narrow-minded. Okay, my dear friends, now let's come back to the e-paper once again. So, now while dialogues of the past do seem distant to the rapid advances in the field of uh, big data and algorithms and artificial intelligence, they undergrade the deeper truths and surface visibly in debates over formation of privacy and data protection framework. So definitely, but the talks of the past, you know, do seem quite distant to the rapid advances that we have made in the fields of big data and algorithms and artificial intelligence. But then again, they do actually, you know, they do form the base of deeper truths and also the surface visibly in the debates over the formation of privacy and other framework. Now, it's all connected. Now, why it's that? Let's see about this. So at present, you know, India has the second highest number of internet users in the world and is an important market for any global companies that have staked dominance with indistinct silos of digital services. So perhaps India, by the way, has the second highest number of internet users in the whole world, and is also an extremely important market for many global companies that have actually staked their dominance, you know, with the distinct, within the distinct silos of, uh, of digital services. Now, let's understand more over here. So while Facebook enjoys sway over social networking, Google has completely taken over online search and email. And Amazon continues to growing, continues a growing capture of online commerce. So perhaps, you know, as well as the internet, internet is concerned, Facebook, by the way, has you know, swayed over the social networking. Google, by the way, has completely taken over online search and email. And Amazon also continues a growing capture of online commerce regularly. Now. So this is further supplemented by a maturing homegrown technology sector, by the way, which learns not only business, you know, models and operated and operational strategies, but even its corporate cultures from such companies. So there are many are homegrown companies. There are many entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs in our nation who, who actually learn their various corporate strategies and cultures from such companies, by the way. Now, let's understand more over here. So though there is friction between these global and local firms, they are united in a singular attempt to collect, store, and analyze the online behavior of millions of Indians. So there might be a lot of difference between the global and local firms that we have here, but then again, they are united as far as in the collection of in the in the attempt of a collection of the data and the, of the millions and millions of Indians are concerned. Now, so it is a material whether customers pay for digital services for the business model of most of firms always factors in a premium for personal data. So it is actually immaterial, you know, it's actually a raw material for them. What do you say? 
whatever the data is there of the customers, it's actually kind of a raw material for the, such data, you know, for such companies which have to analyze data. Anyway, so it is immaterial whether customers pay for digital services or uh, for the business model of most firms always factors in the premium for personal data. And that's also a point over here. I think it's a very common fact right these days that, you know, that you just download a particular free data which comes with in-app purchases and then ultimately you also tend to spend money on it for uh, getting a particular benefit of the same. So that's the point over here. So anyway, guys, so that's the first article. That's a part of the first article that we just read and analyzed. And I'm pretty sure that it would have seemed extremely useful to you. Now let's see question number one that we have here for you. So now, uh, sorry, question number two, that's the thing. Uh, this is basically a main question anyway. So which of the following is not true according to para one? So what's your opinion over here that the following seems not true? Statement A is I believe in the machine and would have it spread in India, but I also believe in the social control of it. Now these are the words of Nehru, by the way. Then are these the words of Nehru? That's what you have to determine over here. So at present, India has the highest number of internet users in the world. And statement C says, though there is friction between these local and global firms, they are united in a singular attempt to collect, store, and analyze the online behavior of millions of Indians. So now the options are only A, only B, only C, only A and C, and only B and C. So you should just pause the video and tell me which of the following is not true according to para 1. Well, I think till now you would have answered this run and the, the thing is, see, it's uh, actually option number two, only B. Now see, at present, India has the highest number of internet users is something which is actually not true because we just read in the passage, it's actually it's the second highest, all right? So at present, India has the second highest would be true, which means over here, the question number second, the, uh, the option two, only B is the correct answer. So I want you to write in the comment section, 2-2 only B if you haven't done it so far. So it should be 2-2 only B. Now let's come back to the A paper once again. So now another layer for extraction of information is added by the government. All right, so perhaps there's another layer of extraction of information, you know, which has been added by the government till now. Already a lot of years exist, you know, from such companies which have been online. Anyway, India has the unique distinction of being one of the few countries that gathers vast amounts of personal data through its compulsory national biometric ID scheme, Aadhaar. So by the way, India is actually one of the few unique countries, you know, that actually gather amount, vast amount of personal data through its compulsory national biometric ID scheme that is of Aadhaar. Now, its wide pervasive use goes well beyond public entitlements or regulated services to sundry services such as online um, matrimonial portals. It almost seems data is, is, the, is not the new oil, it is air itself. So perhaps, you know, the wide what do you say, the wide uh, pervasive use, you know, the wide, you know, the wide usage of data, perhaps, you know, prevalent use of uh, this particular, uh, you know, data system by the, of Aadhaar, you know, goes well beyond public entitlements or uh, regular services, which are supposed to do, to sundry services or to provide services such as the online matrimonial portals. It is almost seems that data is not the new oil, not the new fuel anymore, which is extremely important for economies, is actually air itself. So it's very important for the entire world to run. Anyway. Now, let's, let's understand more over here. So, the European template, though digital technology is finely threaded with the fabric of our lives, India maintains a curious omission of a comprehensive, enforceable data protection law. So, definitely now see the data, the digital technology is completely threaded, very finely threaded with the fabric of our own lives, by the way. But then again, India actually remains. A, con a curious, uh, yeah, and in fact, India doesn't maintain a curious, a very strange omission, you know, of a complete enforceable data protection law. So, now, the limited protections which do exist are under the Information Act, uh, Information Technology Act 2000, and its subordinate regulations remain substantially deficient and practically unenforceable. So, perhaps, see, limited protections which do exist, which actually are there, do exist under the Information Technology Act 2000 and its subordinate regulations also remain substantially deficient and practically unenforceable that cannot be enforced. Now this stands, by the way, this stands in stark contrast and in fact pretty much against the, to the European Union, Union you know, which has taken time 
to develop an advanced data protection framework, the general data protection regulation that goes into effect in a few months. Now, that's a very good point, by the way. There is good reason to look forward to the Europe, to Europe. So perhaps you know now what uh, actually happens or what actually happened in India regarding the with, regarding the Information Technology Act is actually complete, you know, in stark contrast, you know, to what's happening in Europe. You know, so they have actually got their general data operation regulation, which will be up and running in just a few months. So that's a really good point, and a lot of uh, good things can be learned from Europe over here. So Graham Greenleaf, the professor of law and information systems at University of New South Wales, Australia, who has studied more than 50 countries in the Asia Pacific regions, notes the pre-existing presence of elements of European laws within their national laws with most needing to update them and enact a comprehensive, st uh, comprehensive statute. So see, the point is a guy over here, a professor over here, who actually, you know, uh, practices, you know, who actually practices a very important point over here. He has studied the laws of the various, you know, of the various uh, countries, you know, especially Asia in the countries in the Asia Pacific region. And he also, by the way, is, has noted that the presence of European laws within the laws of such countries in the Asia Pacific. And, but then again, he also noted that these laws need to be updated as per the time. Now, so even as text, the, GDP, the GDPR is a progressive instrument. That's also there. Even on paper, the GDPR is way ahead of many practical rules that actually exist in the Asia Pacific region. So the very preamble of the GDPR reflects an attempt to protect the rights of individuals through a digital protection law, treating the, treating the requirements of industry and statue and state as limited exceptions. So perhaps, you know, the main, the main essence of the GDPR of this European, European law, by the way, actually reflects a clear attempt, you know, to protect the rights of individuals in, through a data protection law and treating the requirements of industry and state as limited exceptions. Now, it is, uh, in, it is the exercise of balance which Nehru adverts into his letter to Huxley stating that the cottage industry is not the exclusion of power loom. So that's the point over here. Now, my dear friends, I'm pretty sure that you would have understood this point over here. Let's see the, you know, let's see the question number two that we have here for you. Question number three, rather. So what exactly is the perfect synonym for the word pervasive from the options of rare, prevalent, uncommon, and scarce? Well, you have to choose your answer, and I'm pretty sure you'll be able to do the same. So see, now option number one is rare over here. That means, you know, something which is not so easily, uh, you know, uh, which is not so easily obtained. Then prevalent means something which is quite common, by the way. Uncommon, which is not so common, you know. Then scarce, once again, which cannot be obtained so easily. So, uh, see, the answer over here has to be option number two, prevalent. Because pervasive or prevalent actually mean the same thing. So you can actually write in the comment section, pervasive equ equals to, you know, prevalent. Pervasive equals to prevalent. Pervasive equals to prevalent. Now see, both pervasive and prevalent mean something which is very common over here. Okay, so it should be pervasive equals to prevalent. That's the point over here. Okay. Now, so guys, let's come back to the e paper. In fact, not come back over here. Let's see, once again, let's see question number four that we have here for you because see, whatever there was in the theme of this article, I am sure you would have got the same. Let's see question number four that we have here for you. So, which of the following is true according to para over here? Now, previously, you judged that the following was not true. Now, you have to judge that the following is true, by the way. That's the point over here. So, statement A is another layer of extraction of information is removed by the government. All right. Statement B says, the limited protections which do exist are under Information uh, Technology Act of 2000. Then, statement C says, the very preamble of the GDPR reflects an attempt to protect the rights of individuals through a data protection law. So you have to judge whether the following is true. By the way, options are only A, only B, only C, only C and B, and only B and A. Now, you can simply pause the video and tell me which of the following is true. I hope you paused the video, my dear. Now see, if you just look at all of these statements, you'll find that statement A, by the way, is not true because it's, it reads like this. Another layer of extraction of information is removed. Rather, it should be is added by the government through Aadhaar. That was what given in the paragraph, but over here, it's saying it has been removed. That means statement A is not true, which means oh, statement B and statement C. Option number four, only C and B, they are, by the way, true, my dear friends. So it has to be, Option number four, only C, 
and B. So my dear friends, now that was all about the first paragraph, first article that we had today. I hope you would have understood how important it is for your examination. Now let's see the second article that we have here for you. So it's a legacy of greed, by the way. How science is stepping in to save the northern white rhino from extension. Now we'll learn about this, so perhaps a legacy of greed and hunting, you know, and how, by the way, science is stepping in to save the northern white rhino from the extension. Now we learn about this. So, see, the last male, the last male northern white rhinoceros, Sudan, died on March 19, aged 45, at OI Project Conservation, uh, what do you say, Conservancy in Kenya, where he spent the last nine, uh, last nine years under the watch of 24 hour armed guards. So perhaps you know the last male northern white rhino, Sudan, by the way. He was the last male northern white rhinoceros. You can understand, the last being of a particular kind, you know. And he died on March 19, aged 45, at the OI Project Conservancy in Kenya. So he spent, now this particular rhinoceros, you know, spent the last nine years under the watch of 24 hour armed guards. So there were armed guards which protected this particular rhino, you know, constantly, all right. So there was a time when northern white rhinos could be found in south e south, uh, southern Chad, the Central African Republic, southwestern Sudan, northwestern Uganda, and also the Democratic Republic of the Congo. All right, so there was a particular time when this particular creature was not so extinct. It was very, and it was found very easily in the northern, in the northern, and you know what do you say? It could be found very easily in the southern Chad area, the Central African Republic, the southwestern Sudan, and the northern western Uganda, and the Democratic Republic of Congo as well. All right, now then what happened in 1960? You know, more than 2,000. Northern white rhinos remained in the wildlife, according to the World Wildlife Fund report. Then the number shrank to just 15 in 1984. So from 1960 to 1984, in 25 years, my 24 years, my dear friends, the number of the northern white rhino reduced from 2,000 to just 15. So you can understand, you know, more than 1950 rhinos were hunted down were killed mercilessly for their, you know, for their uh, haunts or whatever they could provide to these hunters. How shameless it is of man to commit such a, uh, such a crime. All right, Nelson and more over here. So the numbers shrank to 15 in 1984 as they were hunted for their haunts and in, in, an ingredient in the traditional Vietnamese medicine. Now, only no, two northern white rhinos remain so, uh, Sudan's daughter Najin and granddaughter Fatu, neither of whom will be able to carry a pregnancy to term. So perhaps it's actually about time, you know, when the time runs out and these two remaining northern white rhinos also finish and ultimately they, the northern white rhino will be perhaps one of the few, one of the first few animals to go extinct since the arrival of mankind. So what millions of evolution couldn't do man did in just a few thousand years, you know. So perhaps these rhinos were here for from a long, long time, but then man in perhaps less than 2,000 years killed and vanished these beautiful creatures. Now, my dear friends, I think it's time for us to take a look at the question that we have here for you. Let's see about that question number five. So now what do you think is the antonym for the word resurrect? The options are rejuvenate, rekindle, destroy, or renew. So see, renew means to bring something back once again, you know, destroy means to completely end something, rekindle once again means to try and get something back, and rejuvenate means to uh, provide energy once again to something. So see, you have to get the antonym over here, and that has to be destroy, my dear friends. So the antonym for the word resurrect is destroy. Now let's go back to this article and let's read more about this. So. Where traditional conservation methods failed to save the subspecies, science is stepping in. So perhaps, you know, though the traditional conservation method failed to save this subspecies, by the way, science is trying to step in. Now, from the sperm of the four northern white rhino bulls and living scents collected from the 13 northern white rhinos before they died, researchers 
from Germany, the US, Kenya, Japan, Australia, Austria, and the Czech Republic are planning a two-pronged approach in vital fertilization, vitro fertilization, and stem cell technology to resurrect the species. So perhaps using the sperm of the four northern white rhino bulls, you know, and also the living cells collected from the 13 northern white rhinos before they actually died, researchers from Germany, US, Kenya, Japan, and Australia, and Austria, and also the Czech Republic, you know, are planning a two-pronged approach in vitro fertilization and also a stem cell technology to resurrect the subspecies over here. So, the conservation effort is being uh, spearheaded by Professor Thomas Hildebrandt, you know, Department Head Reproduction Management of the, of the Leibniz uh, Institute for Zoo and Wildlife Research. So that's the point over here. The conservation effort is being spearheaded by this professor over here. So now from, you know, from uh, Berlin, a team of scientists from the Lebanese IZW will go to Kenya in May to extract eggs from Najin and Fatu. And in, in Trimona, Italy, the eggs will be fertilized with the sperms of northern white rhino bulls. So student sperm will not, is not viable anymore due to the lack of, uh, of uh, genetic distance. You know, once the eggs are fertilized, they will uh, need to surrogate the mothers and closest living relatives are the southern white rhinos. So perhaps, you know, from Berlin, a team of scientists from the Lebanese IZW will go to Kenya in May to extract from the Nijan and uh, from Najan and Fatu, the granddaughter and daughter of, you know, the daughter and granddaughter of that the last uh, northern white rhino. So in, in Cremona, Italy, by the way, these eggs will be fertilized with the sperm of northern white rhino bulls. You know, the Sudan sperm, by the way, is not, going, it's not viable at all due to the lack of genetic distance. That's the point. Once the eggs are fertilized, they will need to surrogate the mothers and the closest relatives are the southern white rhinos. Uh, you know, and perhaps they will be used to you know, make sure that the, they produce babies over here. So IVF has been performed successfully on the Asiatic lions and the team at the Lebanese IZW is developing the procedure for rhino. Now, Stephen Seat, you know, from Lebanese IZW is optimistic about IVF. So in the next two to three years, it is probable that the world will become the first living, uh, that the world will welcome perhaps the first living IVF northern white rhino, he said in an email interview. So perhaps IVF has been performed successfully previously on the Asiatic Alliance and perhaps, uh, you know, using the same method, more like a test tube method, you know. So gonna, they're going to try and make sure that uh, perhaps they will be able to produce a northern white, you know, a northern white rhino once again. So perhaps in the next two to three years, it is probable that the world is going to see and welcome the first living IVF northern white rhino. So that's perhaps the way in which all of this can be, uh, you know, made okay and perhaps uh, we'll once again be able to see the northern white rhinos. But then again, there's also, all of this is still on paper and it's all based on chance. Let's hope that we actually are able to make sure this chance is okay, this chance is good, and perhaps we are able to give this animal a chance once again to roam freely in the world. Now let's see the parajumble that we have here for you. Let's have a look at the parajumble. So see, here's a seven sentence parajumble, my dear friends. You simply have to do three things. First of all, excuse me, to try to find the first statement that exists over here. And then second, Try to, you know, try to align, try to just get the logical pairs correct. And then option, the third step that you have to take is trying to align them in a proper lineup. Okay, so pause the video and start working on the same. So I hope, guys, that you were able to pause the video and you did solve the parajumble. Now let's see the correct order of the parajumble that we have here for you. Okay, so now. So statement, this is the correct order, it's D-B-E-C-F-A-G, D-B-E-C-F-A-G. I hope you also have the same order, my dear friends. Now see, statement D over here is the last male northern white rhino, Sudan, died on March 19, aged 45, you know, at the old, at the old Pajeta Conservancy in Kenya, where he spent the last nine years under the watch of a 24 armed guard. What more? There was a time when the northern white rhinos could be found in southern Chad, the Central African Republic, the southwestern Sudan, northwestern Uganda, 
and the Democratic Republic of Congo in 1960, more than 2,000 were remaining, according to a worldwide World Wildlife Fund report. Then the numbers shrank to 15 in 1984 as they were hunted for their horns and ingredient in traditional Vietnamese medicine. So my dear friends, that's the correct order. It's D-B-E-C-F-A-G and I hope that you also made the same. Now let's see question number seven and eight that we have here for you. So here's question number seven for you. Now, the last male northern white, the last male northern white rhinoceros, Sudan, you know, died on March 19, aged 45, at the OI Prigeti Conservancy in Kenya, where he spent the last nine years under the watch of a 24 armed guard. So, what do you think is the error in this question? Does it exist in the first part, or the second part, or the third part, or the fourth part, or is it a no error? Pause the, vi pause the video and try to find the error over here. Okay, I hope you pause the video and found the error, by the way. Now, so see, the question over here is the last male northern white rhinoceros, Sudan, you know, or northern white rhinoceros, Sudan, died on March 19, aged 45, at OI PJ Conservancy in Kenya, where he spent. See, the thing is, it has to be where he spent, because ultimately we're talking about, you know, we're talking about past, all right? So the past tense for the, using for the word, the past verb for uh, the word spend has to be spent, E-N-T. So that's spend, spend, spend. So that is why we have to make sure that we use spent over here. So it should be where he spent the last nine years under the watch of a 24 armed guard. Okay, now let's see question number eight. Only two northern white rhinos remain, Sudan's daughter, Najin, Najin and granddaughter, Fatu, none of whom will be able to carry a pregnancy to term. Now, if you think the error exists in the first part, you can simply type 8-1 or 8-2. If the, the second part, if the error is in the third part, you can simply type 8-3. Or if it's in the fourth part, you can simply type 8-4. If there's no error in question number eight, you can simply type 8-5. So pause the video and try to find the error over here. I hope you found the error. See. Once again, read the question over here. Only two northern white rhinos remain. Sudan's daughter, Najin, and granddaughter, Fatu, none of whom. So see, we are talking about two over here. So it should be what? It should be neither of whom, not none of whom. Okay? So the error is in the third part of question number eight. It should be neither of whom will be able to carry a pregnancy to term. So my dear friends, now we can come back to the center screen once again. So that was all in this, in today's editorial analysis. I hope, my dear friends, you liked the analysis because we also covered the data protection law. We also took a look at a very, very important environmental-based articles. So we also got motivated in the beginning and we hope that you actually stay motivated. That's very important, by the way. So keep watching Editor Person because Vedas government job is right in your pocket. Thank you. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update from Adda 247. Bell icon the bye, a da two four seven key sari notifications by a da two four seven government job in your pocket.